Hi, this is Pepper Lewis. Thanks for sharing your time with me. This audio program is very important to me. It's been a project long in coming, and it's one that's near and dear to my heart, the way that many of the other Gaia projects are. This is a very interesting way to communicate with one another. And if I start to think about how far technology has come from when I began to channel so many years ago until now, I'm just amazed. And yet, at the same time, I can think of many different things that Gaia has said to me, pictures that she has shown to me, that were not very far apart from this experience that we're now sharing and some of the other ones that looked a little bit far-fetched at the time and that I might have considered were just my imagination going a little bit too fast, well, I can probably bet that those are coming pretty soon too. You've probably noticed in your own life as well that time is accelerating. Your days, my days, are becoming complicated and they're going by ever so fast. And so there's a lot to consider these days. There's a lot of new subjects or old subjects that we can consider in new ways. And that's what I hope to do in this audio series. I would love to meet every one of you individually, and I hope that I will. I hope that I'll be able to see you at upcoming seminars and in the different travels that I make. But in case I can't, then here is another way for us to meet. Another way for Gaia to reach out to you through me. And so I hope to be able to consider many different subjects with you, some that I'll think of and some that Gaia will suggest and some that I'm hoping that you will suggest as well. I invite you to find me on Facebook and on Twitter and through the website pepperlewis.com so that we can share many different interesting subjects and exchanges together. So our subject for today for our first audio channeling is water. Something so simple that we take for granted. It's always there. We think we should have more of it or less of it depending upon how we live or where we live. And yet any subject that I have ever proposed to Gaia has become so much more interesting, so much more deep and introspective and insightful. And so we begin with water, the simple element of water. And now if you'll give me a moment of silence, then I'll ask Gaia to come forward and address the subject. Indeed, sweet ones, I greet you once and always in a similar way, always with a simple greeting, always in a way that acknowledges the fullness that you are. There is indeed a fullness to you, which encompasses your consciousness, that which you bring to the moment, that which yet sleeps. It is not truly unconsciousness, it is simply a sleeping maneuver of consciousness itself. In other words, aspects that are still becoming conscious, but they are no longer unconscious. Interestingly, this time that you are in now is a very conscious time, and yet it is also a time in which unconsciousness or the sleep mode is prevalent. Why? because consciousness must be protected. Consciousness, like innocence, must be cared for. It must be nurtured. It must be uplifted. It must be enlivened. And it must be fed good quality thoughts so that a good quality life and journey will follow. If the life that is being lived is a quality life but is not being fed adequately, then all things in some way suffer. 
and so that humanity will not suffer, then much of your consciousness remains in a protected state. Imagine that you were traveling to a world that was far, far away. A world that you would need to move to through space travel, for instance. And of course, then, so that your body would not be overtaxed for a very long journey, imagine that the body could then be put to sleep. And of course, you have seen modalities like this in your science fiction movies, because for the most part, humanity has not yet comprehended or understood how to move through space, not in an adequate way. And so imagine then that all of the protected parts of you go to sleep until you meet with your arrival. Well, now in this time that you are in, although you cannot see it for yourself, a great part of you is also being protected. It is being protected for you and in some cases from you. Because since you do not truly know how to adequately care for body and mind in such a way as they will all come together, then it is being animated for you. And in that animation, what seems to you simply as the unknown is in actuality known to you, but remains in a protected place within you. Now, at a certain point, a little bit individually for each one, this protected guidance, protected information, knowledge will simply become your wisdom. It will become everyday knowledge, everyday kitchen wisdom, you could call it. And it will seem as if you have known it all along because it will be simply released. Like something that is released into your bloodstream, this will be released into your thought stream, into your stream of consciousness. So the unconscious protected aspects will release the healthful wisdom, knowledge into the newer consciousness, which will then be prepared to use it and to animate it and to engage with it. You see, in essence, why waste the very best of your life on an unconscious moment? Why waste the very best resources of all if they are not yet ready to be used? And so here we begin then by releasing the sacred elixir that is yours, that is for each one to draw for themselves. And so prior to our beginning, whether it is this topic selection or any other that we may bring forward, it would be opportune for you to reach, literally reach into your mind with your thoughts awareness, reach into the deeper recesses and there know that it is being stimulated by a moment such as this a stimulating thought, a stimulating subject, a movement into a different thought process to engage the aspects that have been slumbering and are now gently coming awake, coming online, new systems coming online. And so we begin with this premise as we address our topic then. The topic of water then is a very interesting one. It is a very important one as well. For who among humanity or any of the other kingdoms of the earth can truly live without water? And yet it is taken for granted for the most part. There are oceans, there are seas, there are rivers and there are lakes. And of course there is the tap. And one turns the tap knob and out comes water. Out it comes flowing, whether it is to shower the body, to fill the tub for the cooking pot, or to the hose of water, or to the sprinkles of the garden, or what it will be. There it is. There it comes from the clouds and the rain in abundance. And so water appears plentifully everywhere, figures prominently in your day, 
you must consume liquids. The liquids are made, composed of water. There are water molecules in your body. You are aware that the earth itself, a good part of it then, is also water, watery. And so it is taken for granted, except, except, that a part of you knows that there is something about water that is so sacred and so important as to not be able to take it for granted. And why? Because all things are changing now. In each cycle of the earth there has always been one element above the others that figures more prominently. And when that great cycle of time changes, so does the prominence from one element to the other. It shifts. And when this shifts, it shifts the balance of all things upon the earth. Now that the earth is moving from the Piscean age to the Aquarian age, there is a shift then, a symbolic shift first, and then energetic, and then physical as well. And so the earth begins to shift now, already doing so from the Piscean or element of water, the fish in the water, to the Aquarian age, the symbol for the air, the lightness of air, or spirit, the spiritual age, if you will like, assisted by the element of air. While this is taking place, while one element shifts from one to the other, from water to air, both are in chaos in some way, both reordering themselves, both prominent at the time. And of course, one cannot throw one element into chaos without throwing all of them. Chaos is not trouble. So it is not that all of the elements are in trouble, not necessarily that they are all in short supply, or that humanity has misused these. To say chaos is to say change. It is to say birth. It is to say rearrangement of resources. And that is what is taking place now. And so you will note within the weather patterns changes in the quality of the air. The air itself becomes more dense. It is a heavier air now. In some ways it has more water content to the air itself. The molecules of the air are a little bit different because they are being conditioned by the molecules of water. And the molecules of water are a little bit different as well. It is a little bit atrophied, a little bit shriveled up. And that is one of the reasons why you are asked to hydrate yourselves more often and as appropriately as possible. It is because the very quality of the molecules of water within you cannot sustain themselves as much or for as long as they were able to do at one time. They must be rehydrated, reanimated in order to continue to maintain your health optimally, of course. And while that is the idea, that is not often what is taking place. For the bodies, for the most part, are dehydrated. Most of your bodies are, I will tell you. Matters not how many glasses of water you are drinking, most of you are dehydrated. And so it is important for you as much as possible to rehydrate yourselves. There are many different ways to do this and it is not only by consuming massive quantities of water and hoping that they will hydrate all of your cells and molecules. You may do a great deal with steam if that is of interest to you. For instance, if you will consume steamed foods, that quality of that molecule which combines both air and water, that will be of benefit to you. A steam room would do you well. Steamed towels would do you well. To wrap yourself in these or bathe near it if possible 
or to place as many towels into a steam room and then to wrap yourselves in these all of these would bring excellent qualities into your being and in fact any aspect that you would bring that has the quality of air and water together these would be of benefit to you as well so if for instance you were in the ocean there where it would bubble and in the wave of the ocean there you would also receive the benefit anywhere that you would find the white water where it has been oxygenated water that would be of benefit to you as well if you will drink then it is also appropriate that if you will find oxygenated enhanced waters this may be of a benefit to you but it must be that which is brought together in a way that contributes to your health and not all of the waters oxygenated type that are being offered into your marketplace are so here each one must do a bit of research to see what is of benefit what can be added or enhanced for your being where you will be in cloud water that will also be of benefit so if you are being bathed rained upon from the clouds from the sky that would also be of benefit to you and so rain water where appropriate if it can be combined with other waters that would be appropriate as well you may drink it you may bathe in it you may make a salve of it or you may simply have it nearby that again is of benefit of course none of these are miracles designed to rejuvenate your body however they do enhance the moment enhance your life they will assist you in radiating wellness they will assist you in renewing yourself each and every day and they have the added benefit of reversing some of the signs that you would call signs of stress signs of aging or any other adverse quality that is brought about by the change of the seasons or the change now of the entire cycles of the earth and of the universe itself that is a beginning of the subject of water and now we may examine other aspects of it for your consideration of course it would be important to think of water then where the subject of economy is concerned already the world has become accustomed that the oil is the commodity of the world that the oil is what all is based upon all of the economies of the world in some way are influenced by the rise and fall of the value and quantity of oil and of course you are aware when this has been inflated or deflated or manipulated for the sake of one economy or another to some degree you may already begin to see that water becomes an important factor well as you might imagine it will not be long now before the subject of water gains a great deal more prominence even than what it does now and so you will begin to see water exchanged as a commodity at first it will seem as if a small investment as if someone that manages a portfolio says well here is a little something for you to consider all things being interesting and green now you may find it interesting to have a small investment portfolio in the protection or enhancement or desalination of water and so it will become a very trendy thing at first and of course who would not want to own a share of water you would wish to own shares of gold or gold principle as it is and oil and so water will be a commodity worth owning as well but how does one truly own water or trade in it well at first it will become one of the futures a commodity future just as all others are 
and the trades or the value will be set based upon what is seen to be the weather patterns and the jet stream for the oncoming years, for that is already changing a great deal. It will be an investment based upon how much water is allocated on a continual basis to each country. For instance, you might invest in European water or you might invest in African waters, North African or South African waters, depending upon what the annual rainfall is and what has been predicted for this. Now there are some very interesting anomalies to consider here and one of them, interestingly enough, will be how does one determine how much water will fall? And of course, there are many different scientific gauges for this, computerized gauges and such. But what if they were not the only ones that knew? And what if the farmers happened to know a bit more based upon what they felt in the soil? And what if the soothsayers and astrologers and channelers, what if they happened to know a great deal more about what would be taking place with water and the underground water tables? And what of those who make weather and change weather? What of them? And so there will come to be a secondary and a tertiary market, all related to water not simply its conservation or its management as there is now, but entirely different economy based about the gamble of the water, for an investment is a gamble after all. Well, the world after all needs to gamble on something else. Already it has gambled on gold, and it has gambled on currency, and many other subjects. It has gambled or invested in war, and so the world tires of all of these investments, and it is hungry for something else. Something else that is profitable, something that is important, that can be bought and sold and traded and hoarded and more. And so water will become just that. Now, all of those then will be consulted, scientists, artists, and all of those who practice the mystical arts as well, for we cannot leave them behind. And there are those that will consider themselves specialists in water. After all, there are those that consider themselves specialists in relationship, specialists in healing. And so why would there not be specialists that know where is water? There are those that douse for water, and they too will gain in prominence. The very old, old investment of knowing, of dowsing, they will become very handsomely paid, particularly the best and better ones. And it may surprise you to know that they will mine for water as well. Just as they now mine or drill for oil, there will be newer technologies and practices of how to mine and drill for water. Because the water tables will begin to change. This one will dry and the other one will move or one will have moved deeper. One will become more acid, more alkaline. Remember that all is changing now and that all of the elements are a bit in chaos. Again, remember, this means that they are remaking themselves. And so all of the uses for water, that will require then the new science of water extraction, water recreation, rehydration of water, that will come about as well. And all of the different ways in which water can be packaged or remade or animated or oxygenated or infused with vitamins for it will be left with less of these as well. All of this will begin to be a part of your new and newer realities. All of the elements will be important. They will all be more regulated than they have been. Again, until now, this has been taken for granted for the most part. And now it will come to the foreground. Already, one thinks of the quality of the air one breathes, thinks of the quality of the water to drink. 
and because you believe that it comes in a bottle with a label or has been packaged at this mineral or at the other spring that it is healthful but when it is discovered that it is not then the quest for the most healthful water will come of course this is not an entirely new subject to you the idea of designer water as they call it that is not a new idea at all now comes the idea of how to design water what else to add to water or to extract from it and so why is pure water if there is pure water and there is altered water to what degree can it or will it be altered before it becomes not water and something else you see this is a fair subject to consider for it will come to that as well when is water not water when is its quality unsustainable when does it no longer support the body or the body functions at what point is water less than water or different than water and what does it become all of this then will lead to the management and the regulation of water again this is not to say that there will be lack per se though some will certainly experience that remember that any subject that we consider regardless of what it is whether it is sunshine or food or monies or what it will be can always be explored from lack or plenty abundance or less and so where one has plenty and believes in plenty another will automatically think it is running out what will i do what must i do how will i protect myself and my family and such and so as with all things and all thoughts there will come many different thoughts relative to water but for now we will stay with the subject of the economy of water again remember that it is a commodity after all a very important one one that is indispensable to human life indispensable to industry indispensable to agriculture and to many other aspects of life and speaking of agriculture we must then as well consider what it is that agriculture uses the water for how much water do you believe goes to feed either a hungry cow that will become later your beef or the grass seed or the alfalfa or the hay to feed the horse to feed the cow to feed the animals that then feed humanity and so there will come a grumbling of this as well for all of these industries are very powerful industries in your time and so those that raise cattle and other feed animals and stock they will have their say as to how much water should be afforded them or at what price they ought to be able to use or to keep or to sell or to exchange and the same will go for many others and so there will come a great arguing between them as well and there will be the manipulations and there will be the threats and this will begin to govern the economies as well now think for a moment in your daily existence in your daily experience already perhaps you have begun to hear of carbon credit management in carbon credit exchanges and now this may mean very little to you because it is an industrial concept after all one that a country considers over another country and it is only now that it is becoming popularized where one country will trade another this many credits over that many emissions buying and selling according to which one needs well this also then becomes a very human a very individual factor one that is not simply now between countries or between industries or even corporations for it will be put to all of the individuals that they must manage all of their own resources they will be allotted so much water to use so much water before there is a penalty 
And it is not simply a financial penalty. It is not simply here now it will be taxed or now it must be paid for at a higher rate. It will be more of a penalty. It will be a system of merits and demerits, one that would appear as if it makes a better or a less better human being. And so here you have another opportunity to learn much about your economy and much about your world. For as an individual, each year or each month, you will be allotted a certain amount of credits, environmental credits, resource credits. And you will need to use these wisely to manage them wisely as any other resource that you manage. Currently, you must manage your finances. You must stretch your dollar or the currency that is yours until the end of the month or until the next paycheck comes. And what if you do not? Well, you must either go without or you must borrow from another or you must be creative of what to do or you must usurp the resources of another. And so now here you have another competitive gesture to consider that you must manage all things including your use of water and to put it literally or else. You must manage it or else or else another will do it for you or another will take what is yours or downgrade your ability to borrow water or any other element as resources become a bit less. And so you will find that there are those who protect water for themselves either in their own well, if that is a possibility, when these do not dry or when these waters are not stolen or taken to good privilege. And here Gaia's words will be explained as Gaia says taken to good privilege is a way to say stolen, a way to say usurped, a way to say borrowed or appropriated, even-handedly or not. You see, perhaps the laws that you would call imminent domain, allowing other gestures or cities or townships to take what is most needed if it must become a public resource rather than a private resource. And so here is another subject for you to consider what seems now taken for granted. The water comes from the tap, it comes from the clouds, it comes from the ground, from the oceans. Now it may or may not come from all of these resources. It may or may not be given or appropriated to each individual. And so there will come other interesting anomalies, all associated with water and the economy of water. Imagine that now in the world there is a great deal of consideration regarding the damming of all of the rivers, you see. How much water does each one hold? When to release water? At what time of year? Into what lake? And of course remember that some of the dams hold back rivers that belong to a state or a country or a republic or a township or what it will be. And sometimes these will flow through many different countries and townships. And if water becomes short, chaotic, or exchanged, because that is what is taking place with the element, then imagine that those that would now come to blows or to war over territories, over boundaries, yes, I must tell you that even they would go to war over the resources of water who will claim the freshest water, who will claim the most important resources, and who and how will they go about claiming it. Imagine that even now I tell you that those countries and lands that are great and to the north and great and to the south, to the Arctic and to the Antarctic, those that have simply been but frozen, frozen lands that no one has paid very much attention to, either than for their beauty, now they are much more than that. Now they are resources. Now to own or to control these waterways or all that they produce, that becomes part of an important economy. And although it may seem that it has been simply by association or approximation which 
lands have owned, which countries have controlled, now it will not be left simply to historical accounts of what or who has been. And so there will be new struggles for water and for these lands, because it is a more pristine water. They will contain certain important phytonutrients that can be distilled, that can be multiplied and understood. For the oldest of waters, they are still the purest of waters. And so again, I tell you that the water becomes part of the economy, a water that can be graded in the same way that you would grade other resources. You may grade a diamond for its clarity or its brilliance. In that same way, there will be those that grade water, making the best available or leaving the worst for other countries. And so, again, the economies of the water become an interesting part of the world. The waters will become taxed, a new kind of tax as well, for, of course, the world will be very needy. And so the taxation of waters, certain kinds of water, not all, well, if you will want the best for yourself, then you will pay the tax for that. Of course, it is not much different than those that pay a higher amount or a tax to have a better quality wine or a cigarette, if that is their desire, or for this imported thing or that. And so it will be the same with water. Already you can see that the groundwork has been laid for this because you already pay for water, this bottle or that quality, but now it will become even more so. It will become expected. It will be part of your report card, so to speak, part of what you know your monthly obligation is, how much will go to water. Now, it is not necessarily that water is such a shortage in the world. But I will tell you that will it will appear to be short. It will appear that water is in short supply, and it will be told to you that it is short. It is less. It is not necessarily so. This I will tell you. For the world has always had enough to feed its hungry, to clothe those that need be clothed, to feed to give thirst water to thirst. But what if it is not available? What if it is held back? Or what if one season does not yield? And of course, those mongers in the media that you know, they will say to humanity, it is not just a short season. It is a bad year, and the year that follows is that much worse. Well, that is about all that it will need to be for the craze to begin and for the hoarding to begin. For humanity fears lack more than it fears almost anything else. And so it will begin to do what it can to hoard, to buy, to sell, to trade in some way to ensure for itself its future or its abilities. So be it. We begin by saying to you that there is no shortage, but it does not matter. It does not matter if it is a real shortage or a perceived shortage or an imitation shortage. Once an economy is fixed based upon what is put forward, in essence, you will have little choice but to follow those accommodations and to adjust yourself accordingly. And so what is the difference between knowing and not knowing? Well, it is a simple one. First, as always, knowledge is power. And knowledge that is engaged well can easily become wisdom, and you wise in the process as well. And so, to understand that the shortage of water is an imitation of that, it will bring peace to you first to know that. Any time that you can know the truth of something, do give yourself that opportunity. Give yourself the opportunity to know and to be one with the truth. Because one truth will lead to another and another and another. 
it will lead to the awakening of higher experience, to the discovery of greater experience, a deeper knowledge, a greater wisdom, and more awakening from the aspects of slumber that we have spoken of earlier. So any time that you have knowledge and that that knowledge tells you there is no lack, all is well, take that to heart because then your mind, your heart, your countenance will be your companion in this regard if you know that any perceived lack is an artificial one then even that breath will be a clearer breath if you take it upon yourself to believe in a shortage then I tell you with certainty that the mind will come to believe it and that you will begin to breathe differently to regulate your breath the depth of the breath that you take whether it is a simple breath or one that reaches to the diaphragm to the lungs one that expands the belly and gives nourishment to you a lesser breath then is one that you hold it is one that you uphold as if a sigh that you do not quite release something that you are holding within causes a miasm a fear a discoloration of the moment itself and before you know it you are not breathing full spectrum light and then you will not be receiving the highest quality of prana from the air that you breathe or of course the water that you receive and so that which is already perhaps suffering the water molecules that we have spoken of then when you add fear to that they will become that much more settled quieted a little bit numbed to life perhaps you can look around at the world already and see that in many ways it has become numb numb to the moment numb to quality one day yields gives way to the next and the day that follows does the same and so each and every day it is important for you to remind yourself of the quality of life the quality of life is not what you do with your day it does include the thoughts that you think about your day but it has very little to do with the content of your day the quality of life has to do with how you invest yourself fully in your life regardless of what the day brings the quality of life is inspired by the breath that you draw you may do little in your day or much in your day and depending upon how the breath carries you from the first moment to the last moment of the day that is where the quality of your life is and so the more that you relearn how to breathe how to animate the air and water molecules within you the greater quality of life you will have and of course you may associate quality of your life with monies or fortunes or creativity or ease or grace or any such thing and yes I will tell you that all of these will be enhanced and without exception the quality of life is what you will bring to the moment if you bring fear to the moment that lessens the quality of your life if you will bring worry to the moment that lessens the quality of the breath that you are able to draw you will not be able to extract as much prana from the air that you breathe if it is a worrisome gesture or a worrisome thought that accompanies your breath in that moment to some degree it can be said worry at your peril at the peril of your health for literally that is so and so in the moment before the in-breath teach yourself train yourself to reach for everything that the moment has imagine that the breath that you are drawing is a sponge 
and that you are there to extract every bit, every molecule of moisture and oxygen from that sponge so that it becomes pranic energy that you then swallow up for yourself and bathe all of your organs and all of your thoughts in. You will see that you will retrieve your health bit by bit. You will see that many qualities of your life, qualities of your physical arrangement, qualities of your sleep environment and your waking thoughts, all of this will begin to change. You will change the alignment of the stars within you for each constellation without reflects a certain constellation within, a certain alignment of atoms and molecules, for they too align in very specific and unique patterns that can be combined or in imitation of the constellations that you might see in the sky above you. So it is important to nurture all of these different aspects and in fact I encourage you to begin to do this even as we speak now. Now, to continue, all aspects of water will come into question. Imagine now that there are scattered throughout your world and for a variety of reasons what you would term ghost towns, little towns, villages and even cities that simply do not have the same qualities that they did at one time. Why? Well, perhaps the economy here or there changed. Perhaps those that were of a young mind or young age took themselves elsewhere. Perhaps one contamination or one economy changed how one city was perceived over another. Or some of the recent economic downturns relative to all of the real estates and holdings and such, all of this begins to change. Something that was once a thriving town or economy into one that is less so. Well, the very quality then, the very element of water, this too will begin to affect changes from city to city. This is not truly very difficult to imagine. Think to yourself, you would rather live in a city that has more abundant water, cleaner water, a better system of delivery of water. Perhaps you would wish to live where there are glaciers that melt into pure water so that there are streams and rivers and lakes to draw upon. Perhaps you would not wish now, fearing that there may be a potential shortage to live in a desert community or perhaps you will, because I will tell you that you cannot see now what is under the ground, and particularly once there begins to be a trading of water for economy, there will be a great deal of more examination of what is underground. So, again, to continue, the water element that is under the ground, there are new scopes that will find it, there will be new scientific instruments that can look deep and far into the earth itself to see what is there, how much is there, and how to get at it if it is found. The element of water is interesting in that it can dance around quite a bit, particularly now. The element of water can hide itself from humanity and a good amount of it is hiding now. Why? Because there is intelligence in all things. There is intelligence to that which is Gaia. There is intelligence to each of the elements and each one is charged with a certain purpose just as each one of you has your own purpose and vitality that propels you forward each day. So the element of water has a certain collective consciousness associated with it and within that there are certain molecules in consciousness of water that know that they belong to the future humanity and not to this one. How do they know that? Well, how do you know what and where you belong? You see? There is a certain awareness that says that to you, speaks to you, drives you with a certainty that does not come from anywhere else. 
It comes from the very universe, from the very consciousness of the all. And all of the elements are also guided by the very same intelligence, by the very same cosmic intelligence that guides these words and that guides you day by day. And this intelligence, in some cases, says to the water, to a body of water, not now. Cover yourself, cloak yourself, save yourself, for your time is not yet, it is not now. And that is why I am free to say to you that the earth has enough and plenty of its resources to support all of humanity, even when and if it does not appear so. So these great bodies of water, large enough to be called seas, and yes, fresh water, not simply oceanic water, but fresh water, each continent has enough. But in some cases it is deeper still, a deep, deep well. And so humanity will have certain problems for itself. How to get to that water, how to drill for that water, how to pump for that water, how to mine for that water. And that, of course, will make certain secondary ideas to market, secondary economies, again, associated with water in the same way that the economies of oil bring about a certain revenue or a certain employment for many as well. The water that is hidden will remain hidden for some years. In some cases, I will tell you, it will remain hidden for as little as six years and as much as 25. So here is a time span for you. And in other conversations, I will begin to say to you where some of the water is, where it is hiding. But this will, information will be given to you bit by bit so that the water itself will make its own decision. It is part of Gaia, after all, and yet Gaia has great respect for all of the kingdoms and the elements and for the intelligence that guides each of these to their own moment. And so, since there is no lack, there is no true concern for worry other than the artificial that will be offered. So it is important for you to hold your consciousness, your intelligence, and all that is within you to say to yourself the truth. Again, as all things, the truth will continue to guide you. In terms of the ghost towns that we have just been speaking of, this will create as well certain towns and cities that begin to shatter up their quality of water. There will be a small scare there, another contamination in the other, a little shortage. For instance, you have your brownouts now that are not as bad as your blackouts, but they are certainly eye-opening when one does not receive what one is expecting. And it will be the same with water. Water will not be received as it was expected. You will turn the faucet and the water will not flow. The reservoirs will not fill. The lakes will be half empty. And so this then will bring about the need for these cities and townships to go to seek water. They will bargain with each other. They will trade with each other. They will threaten one another. And here and there they will come to an agreement for better for some, for worse for others. But to those that see this kind of writing on the wall, there will begin to be a very vast migration of peoples away from one city or state or country and to another that is more resourceful. It is not uncommon to think that if the jobs be able to dry up in one place, but they are more plentiful elsewhere, then that is where the economy will go. Humanity will go to where there is jobs. It will go to where it can source, resource itself. And if there is a shortage or different aspects of water that bring a discomfort to mind or body or heart, there will be a moving away from these areas and to others. Many times in your history this has been the case. Imagine that when certain nuclear tests have been brought forward in certain areas and the water has been found to be contaminated or the air as well. There has been a very quick move in this case away from certain areas and to others. 
and now will come a similar time. And that is not to say that there will be scares in this way, but I have already said that there will be certain contaminations and such that will challenge humanity here and there. These will not be widespread, but I tell you that country by country and continent by continent there will be little exception in this way. Now, there will be as well different ghost towns that become emptied of people. Later, much later, there will be a return to these cities, and an example will be made of these, and they will be recreated, reinvented, regentrified, as it is said, as other neighborhoods are. The same will be of these cities, but not for a time. There are some that will be lost for a time, lost cities that seem to have no use. They cannot be bought, they cannot be sold, and so they will simply remain in a state of disrepair with very little and fewer populations, those that would not abandon their property, those whose families have been for much and longer time, those of a certain age or a certain belief that will still populate them. But for the most part, they may as well be called then ghost towns, or another word that will be used that is more appropriate, they will be drowned towns. In essence, a little bit of an oxymoron, perhaps, because the very thing that they are lacking, water, and yet they will be called drowned towns. Long and longer ago, after there were ghost towns of years ago, and when the dams were being built, and when these were very, very popular, the term drowned town was used because the waters and lakes and reservoirs literally filled and buried the very older ghost towns. There they were at the very bottom of lakes. Now, once again, the term drowned town will return, but with a different meaning. That is a bit later, but I give it to you for your consideration just the same. Now, it is important as well to consider that anything to do with water as a resource will have an important aspect, and so the economies, again, there will be a new form of toilet, a new form of plumbing that considers or carries water in a different way, via a different vehicle, water that can be reclaimed. There will be many different versions of grey water, many different versions of salinated and desalinated water, and the technology of how to purify and enhance water or to make more of it, that will become very popularized as well. There will be water in which certain beneficial algae is found to be very enhancing. Water in which certain seaweed will also regenerate, reinfuse the water with all of the phytoelements that are very necessary to the body. And all forms of other water that you might imagine. <laughs>